record. Shall I start? Yep. Okay. Well, I I just thought we this is our call our um, discussing focusing on uh, the way God has shaped us and um, just thought I would just remind us a little bit and then Matt will be sharing what they have what they did at link this summer and some uh, um, insights they had on on how to do it how they did this as a group maybe some ideas what they did well and maybe some suggestions on what they could do better if you want to do this with uh, some of your leaders so <clears throat> Father, we pray you'd bless our time together, and we pray that uh, you would help our churches to be growing and effective in our ministry. We trust you to just uh, help us be great. I think of how Paul said, we proclaim him with all wisdom. And I pray, Lord, as we proclaim Christ, and as we build our churches, we'd have all wisdom, discernment, and um, that we might be a wise master builder. So we pray for this, and we pray it and lead our time in Jesus' name. Amen. So you guys know that the emphasis of what we talked about there is if you can, in the focusing group, is if you can identify such things as your, your gifting from God, your calling from God, the things God has made you good at and, and passionate about, that we can be more effective in ministry and also more enjoyable in ministry. But there's some things for us that, dare we say, we, we, we sense the Spirit of God um, uh, empowering us and where we sense um, uh, the, the God, not only is God's blessing upon us, but God's fruit is upon us. And part of our desires is to help each person get more and more in the place where they can confidently identify and say, this is where I'm gifted. This and not, not thinking that sounds proud, but God has given me strengths and abilities in this area. It's given me a real desire. And the more the belief, the more, the more we focus there, the more our blows can count, the more our efforts can count. So um, I just thought I'd read <clears throat> Just from Romans 12, for as we have many members in one body and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many, many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly, if prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So we have different gifts. And of course, you know, we have the different assessments, but we don't all have the same function, but we all have, the, we do have the same mission. We all are all one body. The gifting is never an excuse to say, I'm just going to do my thing. Or I'm I'm just uh, I'm not going to serve in that way because that's not my gift, but rather we just want to work to where where we have a, a spirit of serving. The more we can serve where God's gifted us, all the better. So, a little introduction, Matt. With that, how to go this summer at Link? All right. Well, yeah, it was something that uh, Link is just a summer project. Uh, I know you, different ones of y'all have experienced. Those uh, ours was for actually f about five weeks in length, and each Saturday morning we we wanted to have a uh, just a seminar that could really add value, uh, something that went beyond just our students spending a lot of time in outreach, follow up, and and disciple making. Like uh, we we. For, for some of our Saturdays, I think we had a, a men's and women's panel. We did a, a Freedom in Christ uh, where Seth Broadhurst came in for the Saturday. Um, and we did, uh, but, but one of them that we did related to uh, focusing. 
and uh, we we wanted our students to uh, better understand their shape. And so we we just tackled this uh, aspect of the focusing part of the C1 app, and I wanted to do it in a way that um, uh, really presented it in a, a relatively brief period of time where we could go through the, the tools that it provided and uh, provide some good interaction. One, one good thing about uh, summer projects, as some of y'all know, you get to know people pretty quickly and uh, you're living with one another. Uh, so, uh, you know, you, where, you know, back home, you've got the advantage of you've known people for, for years at a time, even though it's a short period of time, uh, people are, uh, get to know one another pretty well. And so it was like the, I think like the third week into our time, uh, we thought people had gotten to know each other a bit. Uh, let's take this uh, focusing and, and, and help them all the more understand their shape and do it in the context of their household uh, that they've gotten to know one another pretty well. So uh, what, you know, I'll just go through uh, how we tackled it. And, it, and I want to present it in a way that it, uh, I think would be really helpful for us uh, in the context of if you've got a leadership team, you want to take it through and, and uh, just say, hey, let's, let's work on our shape, discuss it among ourselves. I mean, you could do it as uh, even a, a church uh, class that you wanted to do. The C1 app, uh, you don't have to uh, become a member to uh, utilize the app. And that's what we did for our uh, for our folks, our students at Link. We didn't expect that each one of them are going to be a, a member of C1. Uh, and, but they have this, uh, this great tool that they can utilize. And so um, let me, I'm just going to do a, a share screen. And I'll start with um, actually the C1 app. So this is this is just uh, the focusing uh, page of the C1 app, and it lists. Uh, it starts off with an introduction, and then it gets into the uh, sh your shape. Basically, spiritual gifts, heart, abilities, personality, and experiences. And uh, and what I think is really powerful is this last part is the next steps. And it, the, the hope even as we developed this part of, of the app and uh, the focusing group was that, uh, you know, we could we could take a bunch of random assessments and say, hey, we've done that. And and then uh, talk about it a little bit and put it on the shelf. And we've all probably done that for spiritual gifts and other things. But I really appreciate how uh, this is designed to take you through your shape, asking strategic questions. And then it goes down to the next steps where you're actually uh, talking about what you're currently doing. And then uh, what things, what are next steps that, that can get you all the more directed towards your gifting and calling. So um, what, and, and I'm gonna uh, share not only what we did, but what uh, tweaks I would suggest that if in hindsight, uh, had we to do it over, uh, I would do. So I put it on a, um, a, a doc here and uh, let's see if I can, I will share that doc with you. Um, sorry, yeah, I should do that. Well, if I don't do it now, people won't be able to see it who are on the recording. Sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna go and, okay. All right, so, um, what we've got here, I'll put it in the chat, but um, this is a schedule of what we did. And, and the thing, uh, again, we didn't do, but I'd encourage you to do is 
if, if you're going to get your group together, I would have them go ahead, you know, a week in advance, say, okay, uh, go to the C1 app. If, if you know, you, you're, you don't have it downloaded, download it. And here's the information for that. Um, they can get familiar with the, the app a little bit. And then also have them take uh, two assessments. One is your gifts. Uh, and I'd say give about 30 minutes. And of course, people are going to range. We had some people take it in 15 minutes, others take it in about 45. But uh, roughly 30 minutes, you can tell them it's going to take to go through a spiritual gifts assessment. And it's, it focuses on the gifts mentioned in, in Romans uh, chapter 12. Uh, and then also encourage them to take the high five personality assessment. And if you've done uh, Strength Finders 2.0, it's, uh, I'd call it a free knockoff of uh, Strength Finders 2.0. Uh, it gives you your top uh, five strengths, which you're going to record on the app. So do that in advance, in advance, that would be my encouragement so that you're not spending valuable time when you're all together uh, individually filling out this, uh, these assessments and it'll, and it'll shorten your time together. So I've, I roughly put down a timetable. This is now getting into uh, when you're together. And we did this on a Saturday morning. And as you'll see, uh, we had three hours. I'm putting down here uh, three hours and 40 minutes if you stick to this timetable. But it really depends on your group size because a uh, key thing I think of, of doing it together, as we'll talk about, is being able to discuss things in a small group setting. So uh, the introduction, I'd encourage you uh, the focusing tutorial. Uh, that's something Evelyn put together, only two minutes. So I'd have a, uh, you know, if you have a screen there available, uh, you can show that. Um, and then also, and this is directly off the app, uh, the focusing tutorial. And then the intro to focus is done by Tom Short. And then uh, there is a, a video that's actually close to nine minutes long. It's broken up into four parts the way Tom did it. Uh, but you, I just uh, played them one after the other. If you want to break it up, that's great. But uh, this is the inspiration. It tackles the, the why to discover and utilize your shape. And so uh, Tom did a great job in developing those four. And uh, so we kick things off uh, just going through those one by one. And then uh, we jumped into the first part of shape, which is spiritual gifts. And the format is basically uh, they've already got, uh, they've recorded their three top scores. And as, as you know, from a spiritual gifts assessment, no matter which one you take, it's a uh, it's at best an, an estimation. It helps you get in the ballpark. It's it's not an exact science, but it it gives you. I mean, I found it to be pretty accurate, in um, and even among the those that link, uh, they it resonated with them uh, definitely for the most part. So um, you've got your th your top three scores, and. That I put as a small group, and uh, we did it by our households. So there was roughly six people in a group. I think, uh, you know, if you can go smaller, uh, just uh, uh, three or four, uh, you might get more discussion in. So, I, you know, it's, it's up to you how you go about it. But um, in a small group, discuss the questions below. And, and I'll just scroll down here. That's your gifts. I've got... Uh, just a, 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 some different questions they can go through related specifically to uh, tackling their what they found. But it's basically just um, you're you're talking about, hey, here was my highest score gift. Uh, here's what resonates with me about the description. And, and there's um, 
there's descriptions about each gift on the app. And uh, again, as I went through my top three, those three uh, descriptions I thought were were very uh, accurate relating to uh, where I was at in, in uh, gifting. So um, anyway, you're going through those. I, I suggested like take the number one score and then everybody go around and answer those questions and then take your number two score and everybody go around with theirs. And then the third one, that way, if you run out of time, you know, you have to miss your, your third one, whatever, no big deal. Um, but that would be the format going through spiritual gifts. And I think just having others in the group that know you to some degree to be able to reinforce, Hey, yeah, I see that in you. Or, you know, where, where someone might say, you know, I, I, I think I have this gift or, and, and others would be able to reinforce that. Or, you know, they might candidly say, you know, I, I just don't see that in you. <laughs> so either way, I think it, that's where it's really helpful to do it in a small group. Um, and, and you're not just plugging away yourself. So we go from spiritual gifts. What I did is um, in our group, we, we again, Tom did uh, two different video sets that had four parts to them. This is the second part. And uh, it's it's more uh, like if you if you don't understand your gift and calling, uh, you know, you, you you're missing out. So there's four parts here. Um, uh, and it's roughly, uh, say, 15 minutes to to listen to those ones that are already on the app that Tom did. And then you can jump into heart. Um, and heart is going to be one that just has questions in it. I'm going to uh, skip to, all right, let's see. It's spiritual gifts. You see that you're going to click on your gifts and you're going to take the test and then you're going to record your results and then you're going to talk about them. Now, under heart, along with the others uh, like uh, abilities and experience, there's no assessment to it. It's just a handful of questions. And we we designed these questions. Uh, Vashi Nemechek did a good job in, in refining them. Uh, but they asked you some key things about your heart, your passion, as you go through that, you're filling it out on the app, and then um, then you're you're actually recording a word that describes your heart. Uh, so you fill that out, and then, um, as this schedule says, uh, you're you're gonna answer the questions during that time individually, and then in your small group, you're gonna briefly summarize how you answered the questions and get some brief feedback. So just verbalizing, I think, can really help besides just writing it down. You're sharing it with others, uh, talking about your passions. And again, others that know you are going to be able to uh, reinforce, hey, I really think uh, this is a strength of yours, something that you've really, uh, uh, I see you really come alive when you do this, you know. So that reinforcement from others can really help. The same is going to be true of abilities. Uh, take time to answer uh, questions on your own. And in a small group, you're going to uh, summarize how you answer the question and get feedback. I'm going to go to, uh, again, this is go down to abilities. It's the same format as heart. You've got um, a series of questions you're answering on the app. And then you uh, end by just a word that uh, describes your greatest ability. Um, so here you go from abilities to personality. Now here uh, in personality, we've got several 
personality assessments. We highlight the, the high five, but um, if you have uh, one of the other ones that's a preference, in fact, I'll go to those right now. Um, high five is the one that's highlighted. But there's also the disc test type finders. Uh, SDI 2.0 is one that uh, uh, I will mention the, the top three are free. The fourth one uh, does cost $50, though, if you get it out there um, on, on the open market, it's $200. And um, let's see, I believe it's Rick Beamer, who uh, is, is a trainer in that. We've worked it out where um, you can get that assessment done uh, through him, through his uh, coordination. But either way, uh, again, whatever you decide, I would suggest you focus on one personality assessment uh, at a time. And for if you're doing it as a group, just, uh, you know, we stuck with a high five and did that one. Um, and so... And with personality, uh, again, it, on this um, doc, I put just some questions to go through as you're talking about it as a small group for uh, the high five. And uh, that will help just in, in getting you going as you talk about it as a group. And then la last of shape is experiences. And you're going to answer the questions and then talk about it as, uh, as a small group. And again, I'll go to the uh, experiences similar to uh, heart and ability. Experiences goes through a series of questions that you're filling out on the app, your answers, and then you're going to put down a one word response when it comes to life experience. And so um, with that, uh, you've, you've filled out shape, you've, uh, you've talked about it. And so, uh, it, it, it's very, I think it's, it's quite comprehensive when it comes to figuring out, okay, what's God's design on my life? How, how do I look at moving forward and really leaning into where, uh, God's gifting and calling for me is. And so that's why we put together this part, this, uh, it's called next steps. And uh, so you're going to answer uh, questions related to that and then talk about it in a small group, uh, the answers to that. And I'd say similar to uh, heart abilities and experiences, next steps, uh, it's broken down into two parts. But each part has uh, questions, uh, just a few questions, and you're going to answer that on the app and those are your answers are what you're going to discuss in your small group so that's my current roles and then uh pursuing my calling and and this is one where uh, you're just putting down some specifics for goals that you want to set uh, the last question even directs you to the home page of the app where and, and I'll go there because uh, the answers you put in, instead of putting it on this part of, of the app under focusing, you're going to uh, write down your answers. Um, let's see. So next steps you can take over the next three months. So it's being real specific. It's, it's not talking about, you know, what are you going to do five years from now? But the next three months, what are some next steps you can take? And so if you go to the home page, at the very bottom, you're, you're going to put, I mean, it could be a book you're going to read, reading list, character development. It could relate to your character, could relate to uh, a skills training that you want to get related to how you can uh, grow in an area that you want to uh, apply yourself to. There could be other assignments um, that, that it's more of a, a miscellaneous or catch-all. But this is a place where you're going to write those things in. And those are, are areas where, uh, for those using the app, uh, your mentor has access to that. Uh, 
and, and you can uh, keep up on goals that you set that if you don't have a good place to put them, uh, you know, a week after you set them, you're trying to think, okay, what did I do? <laughs> so it's a great place to put them. So this is what we did um, as, let's see, um, I'm going to tell you what, I, I'm going to go back here and hopefully, oops, So oh, this probably doesn't help you, does it? Um, this is a link here that I will uh, put in the chat. Um, and that's to this uh, Google Doc if you want it. Just It just lays out the schedule. So with that, I'm going to um, take off share screen. And uh, Tom and I would love to to field some questions. I'll just uh, follow up with as far as how things went. Um, there, I put in, in the chat. Oops. Um, the link to that, that doc. Um, our students really appreciated taking that time. Um, I would say uh, uh, you know, it, what I showed you would have been the format I'd, I'd use. I had to uh, change some things out where we did an assessment during that time. I, I would not do that again. I'd, I'd have them do it in advance. Um, and uh, I think there was some good, lively interaction within each table as they discussed their answers. I think they really appreciated it. And talking with students, uh, they, they set some solid goals. I was talking with one this morning who is excited to start into the fall with uh, a, a certain aspect of uh, outreach to classmates that she hadn't planned on uh, beforehand, but uh, it just really encouraged her to, to tackle that head on. Uh, so again, I, I feel like um, we, we've put together this focusing part of the app, a tremendous tool. I think uh, going through how it flows and how it, it leads you to practical steps for uh, setting goals and moving forward, being accountable to, uh, it's great to have. I think having some kind of format to do it in, uh, what we did there at Link, I, I think is a valuable, valuable part of that. Because I, I think it would be a, take a very highly motivated person to just go in there on your own and fill all that stuff out and and be a, accountable to themselves on it. But if uh, I'd encourage you to consider in, in whatever small group, if it's a leadership team you've got, uh, if it's a, you know, I could see it being a class within your church to, to take them through. Uh, there's other possibilities. But uh, and consider a format like that, just custom design it for how you want to use it. And what I'm planning on is uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, be reminding our linkers that at the three month point, uh, we're going to get on a Zoom call and we're going to share testimonies of how are we doing at the goals that we set. So uh, I encourage you uh, find some way in the way of uh, follow up for that. So, yeah, uh, we, we'd love to field any questions you have. Uh, I, I just had one quick thought actually well first of all thanks for showing us that matt and just you know because I've, I've downloaded the app but just haven't really done much with it yet you know everyone's busy i've got five kids we can make excuses but i was just thinking to myself like like man you know because i was just looking through the app again and you know everything that you showed us i was like wow there's a 
there's a whole wealth of information here. Obviously, a lot of time that's been put into producing all of this material. So thank you, by the way, for everybody involved in that. And I was thinking, man, uh, there's probably a lot of other people like me, too, that went to the C1 Network conference and like, yep, this is great. Good to see you guys again. Sure, I'll join. And and then haven't really done much yet, but per perhaps, uh, I don't know who would be in charge of this. It'd be good to, you know, everyone gets emails and texts, whatever, but uh, maybe start sending out a, I don't know, bi-weekly or even monthly reminder to the C1 Network people and say, hey, have you checked out this part of the app yet? Here's a useful tool, um, you know, something like that to just get more, because, you know, now that I'm seeing this, I'm thinking like, man, that, why, why haven't I been utilizing this yet? You know, this, so uh, that's kind of what I, the main message I got out of this time is like, this, this is great stuff and I need to start using it and, and start making, yeah, the rest of our leadership and people at our church aware of these useful tools. So. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. So those are my thoughts. Thanks. Paul, I think you're probably the only person to think that way. <laughs> Not really. That's not your, true. It's just he's right. Be, it, everybody's um, super busy. You know what, Paul, we've been doing uh, that would be really helpful is if you were to do a 30 second video saying what you just said about the app and about where you just got that from. What we do is we get those kind of things from people. We put them up on the Facebook page. We email them out. That's what Evelyn you know, does every few weeks. So we've got little snippets from lots of people, um, you know, from things just like this. We can cut and paste this Zoom call, huh? I guess we could. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. He's already on record <laughs> saying that. Yeah, right. take take a video clip from yeah, this. You, yeah. You've got my you've got my permission. Yeah, and, and share it because awesome. like I like just now I had a awakening moment. I'm like, wow, I need to start using this. This is good stuff. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> You know, uh, just to mention, this dovetails in very well to the dream weekends that C1's doing. Um, I think having gone through this, uh, it primes you for really saying, okay, what is next? And I think especially for pastors uh, trying to to sort out, okay, am, am I in my sweet spot? Am I really focused where I need to be? Uh, man, this it's all connected. Let me ask, since this is um, for the Q&A, and I, and I agree with the past idea that Paul mentioned about like the app and everything. I get, I get emails as reminders of like the apps that I usually use, like, you know, Evernote and Lagos. I get emails highlighting features, you know, and maybe, you know, that can be, a, that could be an idea that can be worked on, you know, where's on sending out emails with, with some of the features of this app. Cause I know it has a lot of, it has a lot of, a lot of features to flesh out, but um, with the Q and A time, just to ask in the aspect of spiritual gift. And I'm not sure uh, if I can, I don't know if you can, maybe from your experience, Matt, or maybe from Nate, you can help out here. If we help other people with the uh, spiritual gifts test, um, I hope this is on topic. If we help other people, we, deal with it ourselves and I know that it's an estimation of spiritual gifts how do we deal with maybe seeing that somebody is not active in that spiritual gift thing or if we do the assignments with the readers if we see ourselves not being active in that spiritual gift um because that has happened I've, I've, I've done spiritual gifts with other people and and then maybe they're not active in that spiritual gift thing like how would you maybe that's a shepherding question like how you do address that and what do you do with that person? It's like, man, they have this spiritual gift, but it's not active in their life. What do you do there? Because usually I, I, that has made me think, me personally, think like, okay, I'm looking for spiritual gifts that are active. So, uh, Using their gift? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you do with that? Personally, and maybe towards your own self, you can apply that, but also how do we help other? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's um, the the heart and design of, of C1 is uh, even as you're mentoring young believers or young uh, leaders that you're raising up, um, how, do, how do you get them moving forward, maturing? Um, and, and I think tied into that is, is working within their gifting. Um, 
I, I think definitely um, where that next steps come into play, uh, just taking opportunity to process that with them individually. I mean, they're going to talk about it. Say if, if they use that group setting, they're going to talk about it in their group, but circling back one-on-one um, -on -one and, um, you know, seeing, okay, these were your top gifts. Uh, uh, where do they come into play? Um, but I, I, I think it gives us, expands so much more of what we can even interact with our uh our leaders about um sometimes I, I don't know i sometimes i'll feel at a loss like okay what what are we talking about this week <laughs> when i when i uh have something like this at, at my disposal where I've, I've got a leader has gone through that um it, it just expands what we're gonna really focus on but i i'm not sure if that's tackling your question uh, specifically. I think um, some of this for, for some people, it's like changing a culture, mm -hmm. a way of how things operate. I think we have a very high core value of servants, servanthood. Mm -hmm. And because of that core value of servanthood, basically we we're willing to step up and do anything that needs to be done. And that's, we never, we never want to lose that servanthood attitude. But to uh, some of the things we, I talk about in those videos, a reminder that God's given me a gift. He wants me to use it. It's, it this is the best way I can contribute to the kingdom as if I, not only my gift, but the more I can operate in the area where I'm gifted. The, the greater contribution to the kingdom I'll be able to make. And so I think some of it has to do with, as, as that just becomes something I deeply believe within me. And I believe it enough that, that I'm kind of determined to make sure and figure out how to make it happen. And as I also have others who are around me, I'm accountable to help me as they believe it. And together we're working on that. Um, I will add one thing that helped me um, was like I took the Strength Finders 2.0 years ago, and I wrote my strengths. I, I they have little stickers, and I had them on on my computer screen, like right here. You you can't see, but it's right here, the top of my laptop. They were pasted there. So often, when I, whenever my computer is open, I would see those. What is it that I'm good at? And by the way, I agreed with the assessment. I thought that it, it hit the nail on the head. And so I, I was just always both subliminally and very consciously reminding myself, focus on that. That's what I should be doing. And am, am I doing these things? It doesn't change overnight. It's not like, you know, I, I went and started a job in a new company and there's a clear job description. I'm doing some. It's, it's learning how within the body to, uh, to, to, I think, to move towards more of a foc more focus. So I would give it time. I would, but I would also try and like do some things to keep it as a reminder. And I would periodically just remind yourself why it's important, which are those videos I went through. Uh, why is it important? The, the God has given me a gift. I don't want to neglect it. I don't want to leave it unwrapped. And God has given me abilities that 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 I, I, I want to help people. If I work here, these are areas I can have the best effect in helping others. So those are some thoughts I have on changing that culture and um, helping develop it. Yeah, Tom, I think I think scripture goes even a step further of not uh, not just not unwrapping the gift. I think we're called to fan it into flames. I think we're called to, to fan it into flames. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we're called to, to take those embers and actually make them burn brightly. One thing, Carlos, that I, I think, again, this is unbiased like crazy, but boy, 
we would love to come do a dream retreat for Miami. I, I think if you guys could go through that and you could see the desires of your heart, you could get at the, what has God wired you? Why is it so, he does, you know, we delight in the Lord and he gives us the desires of our heart. You know, what is the, the power of that? Your people would, would, would be able to come away from that time or, you know, your leadership team, just more, just maybe a, a, a leapfrog into the idea of operating in your gifting and calling. Um, cause that's just, that's the main thing it's designed to do. What are the desires of your heart and what's getting in the way? What's stopping you from being able to do them? So we'd love to do that down there as well. I hear you. I hear you. And I, and I have heard of, I've been seeing about an opportunity that I can go to and join on one of these gym retreats, but that's definitely something to think about, but I hear you also, Tom, with what you said as well. The, on the aspect of the culture aspect because we do have a lot of sometimes leaders that are very and I have, I, I have some leaders that I'm also talking to as well that you have that that desire that culture of serving serving and not allowing other people and enabling other people into their gifting you know that Ephesians training equipping again simply hitting understanding where you're hitting kind of like your weaknesses kind of like let go of things that other people may do I think that's I'm catching you correctly on the culture aspect mentioning. Yeah. I, I, see I see that. A lot of guys, by the way, operate in their area of giftedness without even realizing it. You know, they're, they, they may not put a name to it, but it's clear they're doing that and that they step forward and they're excited. But yeah, I noticed one, you know, one of the videos that mine I had was developing a, a not to do list. And we, we don't want to do that to the extreme that we're just going to completely leave it undone. But if we become conscious of the things that are keeping me from focusing and we, we just realize, you know, we've got our not to do list there and we realize I'm spending whole, all day doing stuff that's on my not to do list. Um, then we, we have to be a little bit, bit more um, intentional. But the, the not to do list is not to say, I'm going to leave stuff undone, the church falls apart. It's to say, it's to help me identify when I'm giving my time and energy to things that I shouldn't be, or that, that I would like to work out of. I'd like to get to the place where I don't give my time and energy to so that. I might need to today or this week, but I'm going to be praying and working towards seeing what I can do to work away from that, those things dominating my day. And, you know, the apostles had their not to do list. It's not, it's not good for us to neglect the word of God in order to pray to, to wait on tables. So they didn't call it that, but that was their not to do list. I know uh, one thing I di didn't mention um, as far as spiritual gifts, there is a second assessment that uh, just below the one that says your gifts. And that's the one that actually Tom Dunham had put together and uh, we got permission to utilize it. It's in the form of a, a PDF but there's also connected with it a Google form that takes you through the assessment that's that Tom has you do. So it also is uses Romans 12 as the basis. Um, but I, I like uh, even his material with the the uh, PDF at the very end. It talks about uh, how you can identify your gifting based on what you're irritated about. <laughs> so I thought that's a a good unique approach uh but it's very true so you know I, I would just pick uh one uh spiritual gift assessment for for a crew, crew to go through at one time if if you want to uh you know if, if somebody wants uh to, to re-examine you might want to use a second one uh and if you have a preference of one over the other uh, we just highlighted, I think the reason we highlighted the, the uh, Your Gifts one, uh, it was well formatted. Uh, you, as you click on different gifts, 
it gives a, a good comprehensive description of, of each gift that I think is uh, re really helpful, but uh, both of them are, are very valuable. So I have a question for you guys. It's not exactly related to your presentation, but it's related to more the area of spiritual gifting and calling. Tom, every time you talk, I feel like you're talking right at me because I feel like I was raised as like the uh, Swiss army knife Christian. Like here's all the things a Christian could do. So you should be able to be doing the basics and all of them. And being a pastor of a small church, especially a young church on a campus, I feel the responsibility to be everything because when I try not to be, it doesn't get done. You know, I feel like my particular gifting and call, like what I'm mostly gifted in is like, um, I really want to go alongside those who are hurting and walk alongside them into healing. And whenever I feel like I try to focus on that, nothing else happens in the church. It's like everything grinds to a halt because I, as the leader, am not leading. It, can you guys speak some to the balance for us small church guys between like the things that need to be done versus the things that we're wanting to do more? I mean, uh, we, we have a relatively small church. What has helped in plurality is we've had discussions as pastors on how much do we do the same thing together. And, and it's interesting with, with my co-pastor, uh, Justin Dykus, man, we're, we're so much alike. Um, and, and I'd say even to certain aspects of uh, gifting, uh, definitely philosophy of ministry. So, uh, but but we've worked on okay. Uh, you, you're you have more passion in this arena. Um, and try to divvy up those responsibilities. But yeah, I, I think I still feel like I, I we both have broad uh, responsibilities. We just took on a, a we, we have a third uh, pastor as of a couple of months ago. So looking forward to what, what that will do to even hopefully help us focus all the more. But um, ooh, that, I would say even if it's, um, it could seem minor, but uh, where you can take some of those roles and uh, we're, where there's maybe not as much redundancy of, of tasks between co-elders. Um, you split it up based on your, your shape. Um, that would be a one key thing. I think there's a skill, which to be honest, I'm not real good at, but that's a skill of delegation. And, and if you, uh, develop that skill and, uh, you know, that th those are some, but, but again, you've got to develop it so that you have confidence that, that like, as you offload one thing at a time, all these things that are weighing on you, as you find someone else who can really do that and you delegate properly, you can have the confidence it's done so that your, your, your mind is free from that area. So I, the reality is, of course, we only have so much time. We wish we had unlimited time, but we only have so much time. And so that requires us to have some degree of focus and, and then to, to find out who can do some of those other things. In looking for such a person, obviously, maybe someone who stands out that they have some abilities and gifts in that area. The truth is, some people in your church will be, I, I, you just got to have faith and believe. There's some people in your church who will be thrilled to do the things that you don't really like doing, but you've got to get them done. And, and I have seen this a lot where people who, they don't, you know, they want to be part of the church, they want to contribute, but some of the, some of the things that we emphasize, like maybe they're not that, all that interested in witnessing, they don't like it or whatever, but there's things that that you're doing that um they really that would get them so excited and 
And so again, so identifying, writing down what are what are the things on this, uh, what are the things I do? <clears throat> Maybe checking, you know, making a, I, I would put like a box so I could put a check mark in it of the things that I would like to someday offload to somebody else. And don't give me the, you know, we would we'll say I want to offload everything. Well, yeah, yes and no. The things that realistically you think these are, they have to be done, but they're kind of a distraction to me. And I'd rather not do them. And so begin to, you know, identify what those are and say, Lord, I give these to you. Bring, bring the person, help me to help me to spot the person or else bring the person to our church who could do these things. And they'll probably be pretty excited to contribute in that way. And you'll be excited to, to have a little bit more time freed up. I like, I like visualizing things. That's why the not to-do list, or in this case, you're to identifying everything you do and in the margin, put a square. What is it that, Lord, these are the areas that I'm gonna, I'm asking you to bring someone else who can adequately do these things. I could, I could successfully delegate them to them so that, um, so that I can give more of my time to the things I, that I think you gifted me at. You can't just undo your, I mean, you can't just, just forget responsibilities. That's important to realize. We have responsibilities. And, get, and some, the, one of the wraps on focus, against focusing, is people neglect responsibilities. And that's not what we're suggesting at all. We're trying to say, how do you focus as the majority of your time where you're really good? Realizing, I mean, I spend time on, I have to spend some time on things I'm not, it's not my gift. I just don't want to be my focus. So. Well, it looks like we're running out of time. And I appreciate the questions. Um, definitely, we're, we're wanting to refine things. Uh, we've had some good input even have, have made changes to the focusing app. Uh, we'd love to see things continue to, to uh, get refined and, um, and utilized. So any suggestions you have, even after you get off this call, uh, feel free to shoot us a, uh, an email or something, just of uh, suggestions or uh, critique, but yeah. Man, uh, maybe we could close this time in prayer. Uh, and uh, uh, how about uh, Tom? Could you, Tom Yang? Could you close this? And uh, we'll uh, yeah, just commit this time to, to what God will do in the future. Amen. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Lord God, we just thank you that as you made us men in your image, Lord, you made us with limitations, and that just brings you more glory, and that each one of us is shaped and gifted the way you desired with the grace that you've given, and it's our job to walk in that, to flam fan it into flames, and to see you do great works through us, and I'm just thankful for that, and for each of these men in this call, for those who are listening to God, just how you are building your kingdom, Lord, and you invite us to join you in that, and I just pray that you'd be helping us know our shape, our calling, and what the tasks are you have on our plate for us. Lord, teach us to balance the responsibilities and the things that are the things we really find joy in doing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.